Hey everyone, it's Justin. Thank you for watching and welcome to my house. That's Justin's house. In this video, we're going to talk about optimal performance of your flows in Flow Designer when it comes to looping. So for loops, do until loops, there is some performance tweaks you can make to have your flows run way, way faster than they would if you haven't kind of architected them or designed them in a way that optimizes performance. Now I've shown this before, there are some design considerations for Flow Designer, and one of them I'll call your attention to is this limit for each and do until loops to 1000 iterations, okay? So that right there is an acknowledgement that there's some memory tax or some overhead when you go over a certain amount of records when you're looping through them. I saw this when I was actually designing my store application crawler that uh, it was about 2100 apps in the store and it started off really fast and then it gets slower and slower and slower, taking up to almost two days to actually complete that particular flow. So let's look at the best practice in action. To simulate this and not show my actual application just yet, because it's not done, um, I've made an a custom action that has an SSH step that reaches out to a mid server and just echoes the application name of the store application, right? So I've got a table of all the store applications and here we're just saying, go to the mid server, echo that at a command prompt and then move on. Okay, so that's gonna take a couple of seconds to do. And then over time, you know, that takes a long time if you look at a thousand records. So originally to show the difference in performance here, I'm gonna pull up a for or a flow, right, that gets triggered by a catalog item. It's still loading here. Uh, we'll let that load up here in a second. I've got a lot of tabs open in Flow Designer. But essentially what this does is it looks up the store application records. I got a table of all the store applications that I got from a sitemap. There's 2,100 of those. But in this lookup, I'm gonna restrict the results to 1,000, right? That's the best practice is not to do more than 1,000 iterations in your, in your uh, for loop or in your do until loop. Then for each one of those, I'm going to log something to the log file in ServiceNow, and then I'm gonna call that custom action to a mid server and, uh, and run that. So that's gonna take a good chunk of time. I'll open this up and you can see where I did limit the results there to a thousand. Okay, so that's the for loop, or that's the flow do doing a thousand iterations in a for loop, okay? My next flow is the same thing, except I'm gonna call a subflow to do the work instead of doing that in the flow with the trigger. So you see, I still have a trigger to call the service catalog, but now I have a variable where I'm saying set this to zero, and then I want you to call that subflow and run this in 50 record increments in the subflow. And what it's doing is it's just totaling up that count until we reach, reach 1,000. So it's gonna do 50, 50 more, 50 more, 50 more, 50 more, until we get to 20 iterations within this flow to complete 1,000 records total. So it's just calling a subflow. Well, what's that subflow look like? That's right here. I've got the input, which is gonna be, um, actually I don't have any inputs. I'm just gonna do a loop count. And I'm gonna pass that back so that we can do that counting back there in, this, in the flow. So this one is gonna look up the store application records, but we're gonna limit it to 50, just 50 applications. And we're gonna loop through those the same way. I'm gonna log it. I'm gonna call that echo to my mid server. And then I'm gonna send back to the flow, hey, I just did 50, right? So it's gonna run through that. Here's the magic. When I do that in the flow, uh, where I do a thousand iterations and make those calls, do that mid server thing, this thing starts, um, and I did this yesterday, it started at 12, 16 p.m., okay? That's how long it took, uh, or that's when it started. If you look here, it's showing the last 50 executions of those 1,000 executions. So if I go to 50 here, so let's just replace this with a five and a zero, and now I'm on iteration number 1,000, you can see it there, and look at what time that completed at 16.52. So that is four hours and change that it took this flow to run through 1,000 iterations of a for loop. That's a long time, but watch this. If I look at the one where it called a subflow and ran 20 times through 50 records, this one started at 1746 or 546 p.m. 
If we do the same thing, this only ran 20 times to do 50 at a time. So we'll go to the 20th iteration and it completed, you can see here, at 1829. It took 46, 47 minutes to complete the same 1000 actions using a flow with a subflow versus using a flow. Can you believe that? It's just mind blowing to me the amount of efficiency by breaking up my work into chunks of 50 that I was able to decrease the time almost threefold, almost from four hours and change to less, it was about 45 minutes. And that is actually what made my crawler so much more efficient. So the message to you here is, if you're gonna do looping inside of your flows and flow designer, move that looping activity to subflows and then limit the amount so you can iterate through them real fast and you'll have a very highly performant workflow where you can move through lots of data really quickly and not tie it up in the traditional flow. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, please subscribe, or share it with somebody who you think is interested in optimizing the performance of their workflows and flow designer. And until next time, don't forget to always be learning.